Robert Rivas Radio, Tejano, and much more. Robert Rivas Radio, Tejano, and much more. And at this time, I'd like to introduce Senior Director of Programming and Marketing for the Tobin Center for the Performing Arts, Aaron Zimmerman. Good morning, Aaron. Welcome to Robert Rivas Radio. Thank you so much for having me. Glad to be here today. Aaron, everybody is impressed here in San Antonio and the surrounding areas on some of the caliber of entertainment that you're bringing to San Antonio and the Tobin Center. Thank you so much. It's been a, it's been a wild ride, get, uh, you know, being a part of a team that you know gets to open a brand new facility in, in an amazing city like San Antonio. And I think the the quality of the building and, and the effort that this team has put behind has really attracted the world's best talent. And we're, I'm excited to be a part of it. Aaron, where originally are you from? I'm originally from Chicago. Uh, I most recently moved here from South Florida. Um, the job I held before this was Executive Director of Entertainment at the BB&T Center, which is the arena equivalent to the AT&T Center here in uh, San Antonio. Wow. Okay, now, the grand opening, uh, we're going to call it Grand Opening Month here yeah, at Yeah, we had um, an opening month or a, uh, an opening night celebration is actually uh, what we called it and we opened on September 4th of last year and we basically had an entire month worth of programming where uh, the idea was to be able to supply some sort of a talent for everybody. It didn't matter who you were, where you were born, young, old, uh, male, female, there was going to be something for you that you could appreciate within that first month because we wanted to attract everyone from the city and let everybody know that this was a home or a town hall that they could, they could call their own now. I think everybody has taken notice here in San Antonio and the surrounding areas to where you're bringing in talent that either has never been here or they haven't been here in quite a long time. What is your secret? Um, I don't know that it's a secret. I think that it's a lot of hard work and dedication to the craft and to you know keeping your finger on the pulse on who's touring and, and talking to the agents and the managers. But um, you know, as I mentioned a lot, I think a lot of it had to do with the rising tide of San Antonio. Uh, I think a lot of artists didn't necessarily play San Antonio strictly because there wasn't a whole lot of places that they had an option to play, you know. Of course, there was the Majestic and the Lila Cockerell. Um, at the time, the Aztec wasn't even open yet. But the availability of those places were slim. I mean, there just wasn't dates available. So the fact that the Tobin has now opened up availability for everybody with another facility has rise, has has made the tide of San Antonio rise for the caliber of artists that have the opportunity to come through here. And I think that's um, a testament to, to the building and the city as a whole for having the vision to put this here, not just me as a programmer. You know how ironic it is because I uh, attended the Boss Gag concert here about a week ago and um, I have been telling several people that Boss Gags had never really been here to San Antonio in quite a long time. and. Um, he actually, that night, when he performed here, he actually said, I don't know why I've never come to San Antonio, but I'm definitely coming back. You know what? I was really pleasantly surprised as well. He sold very well. It was an almost sell-out show. Um, and, you know, he actually is a Texas native. Um, I think he's from, and I could be wrong, we should probably double check my facts here, but I think he's from outside of Dallas somewhere. Um, in fact, it's my understanding that um, his first band, he was in a band with Steve Miller. Right. Um, and went to high school with, uh, with him as well. So I was really excited to have Boz. I think that, it, you know, like you said, he hadn't been here in many years. And um, that was a really cool show. And, and to be able to have that back-to-back -back nights with another legend like Greg Allman, who was here on Tuesday this week uh, doing, you know, the Greg Allman band and greatest hits of the Allman Brothers. I mean, these are experiences that a lot of, you know, San Antonio hasn't really had. Uh, in the past to a, cer to a certain degree. I mean, there's always those artists that have been playing and that have been here, but um, I think the variety now has really become uh, much larger. I think, Aaron, that a big part of this as well is the type of relationship you carry with either the representatives or the artists themselves, wouldn't you say? It does. Um, I've been programming for almost 17 years now, um, and I've built a lot of relationships over the years that have really helped, have helped me be able to close deals and bring artists to different facilities over the course of my career. That said, I think that, you know, the biggest coup in my entire booking career has been here in San Antonio and having the opportunity to work on the Paul McCartney deal. Um, having Paul McCartney in a 1700-seat theater is not only incredible, but it just doesn't happen. Uh, there was a little bit of luck involved in it in the sense of the timing and, you know, of course, you know, uh, money and politics and, um, you know, a whole lot of other, you know, things that, that all came together to make that happen. But for me, that was the highlight of my career, um, <laughs> what, what was that show. Sure. Um, and I came from the arena where we did a lot of really big shows. I mean, you know, I've worked on, you know, Beyonce and, and Jay-Z and Justin Timberlake and Cirque du Soleil and Disney on Ice and, you know, all that stuff. And it just doesn't compare to the energy that surrounds Paul McCartney. 
Aaron, you would think that some of these artists, of course, they're, they're used to performing at big venues, monster venues, and when they come and play here, like at the Tobin Center, et cetera, et cetera, do you see it more as a, maybe like a more of a personal setting, more of a one-on-one -on -one with the audience? It absolutely is, and I think that's why the artists are going to continue to come to the Tobin. Um, it's one thing to introduce them and, and tell them how great the space is, and it's another to have them on the stage and actually perform there. And I don't think I've seen an artist come off the stage yet that hasn't been like, wow, that is a beautiful facility. The sound is incredible. I mean, this place was built for sound. I mean, because of the involvement of the symphony and you know being the home of the symphony as well, they were very careful with all of the materials that they used in the room, in the main room, you know, for acoustic reasons, you know, down to the wood and the fabric and the chairs and the curtains on the wall. All of that was, was chosen in mind so that you would, so that the patrons would get the best sound quality out of the room as well. No doubt. And also the different seating levels that y'all provide for your audience. Well, that's, um, that's also something really unique. In fact, the most unique aspect of this building um, and more unique than any building in the country um, because we have the first in the United States electronic convertible floor that allows us to go from a standard 1,750 seat theater as you would see anywhere in the country, but we can also flatten our floor out completely and get up to 2,100 on a standing room only general admission like you would see uh, at House of Blues or at any club across the country. Wow. Do you envision any time in the future where there'll be some uh, events performed here where they're going to be recorded? Absolutely. Um, we've had some events recorded actually already. Um, I, KLRN was in here. Uh, they did a project called The Telling Project with the military and that was filmed for um, PBS as a special. And uh, there have been artists that have come to us now and, you know, asked us, you know, on certain occasions, uh, can we record, what are the limitations of that and so forth. Uh, as well as the symphony. Uh, I'm fairly confident, and I know they do it maybe for a lot of their own internal purposes, but I'm fairly confident that they have been recording some of their productions uh, since we've opened. That is awesome. And even more so what you were talking about with Paul McCartney in a small venue like this. Small for Paul McCartney, no doubt. But for you to pull that off to bring up Paul McCartney into the Tobin Center, wow, that is simply impressive. Um, I appreciate that. Thank you. It was definitely a lot of hard work, but it, it speaks to the quality of San Antonio as well and the quality of the building of the Tobin and the team we've put together because without all of those pieces coming together and without the city supporting uh, this building and, you know, frankly, him coming in on that level, none of it would have been able to happen. So uh, it's definitely a team effort and, and the city is part of that team. Aaron, I know we were talking about this before I started recording you here because we kind of just took off and we were just talking and talking and chatting away. But I know you mentioned something here to where you had uh, taken notice, you know, the talk was out there to where why do some of these artists pass San Antonio up? They go to Austin, they go to Houston, they go to Dallas, they, and some of them would just pass San Antonio up. Um, they would, and I think prior to, well, both the Aztec and, and the Tobin Center for that matter, I think, Prior to that last couple of years ago, um, there was really a lack of options. I mean, there was a lot of Cochrane, like I said, but the Majestic was really truly the only, you know, proper roadhouse theater uh, in the city. And they had the symphony, the opera, the ballet, Broadway Across America with a Broadway subscription. And once you lay all of those in, I mean, you can't book more than one show in a day. So the availability of the space was literally, I think, the limitation on why they weren't coming here. Not because they didn't want to play San Antonio, not because their fans weren't here, but because they didn't have a venue that, you know, was capable of either doing their show or available when they were trying to bring their show through. Aaron, let me ask you a question here. Now, part of trying to get bands, singers, groups, et cetera, et cetera, shows to a venue, to an event, however you want to put it, don't you think that relations between a manager and the person bringing the, the, the artist over here has a lot to do with it as well? It does. Um, there's, no, there's no agent or manager on the planet that wants to jeopardize their act for one performance. This is why it's so hard to ten tentatively break into the business because it, it's, it's a catch-22 in the sense that the agent doesn't necessarily want, you know, it's not necessarily about money. I, there's a lot of people that have money and that will pay for acts to come through. But if the agent or the manager isn't comfortable that the place they're going to play, the promoter they're working with, and the staff that that promoter has is going to do quality work and promote it properly and market it properly and support the band in the way they want, they're not interested. And so part of that is, and the Majestic has those relationships, they do to a certain degree um, as well, for sure. Um, but I think that, you know, the fact that I, I have been doing this 17 years and, you know, I have built strong relationships over those years, 
definitely helped the cause uh, in getting some of the talent that we got. Of course, of course, and we applaud your efforts. We really, really do. Now, one, uh, one, uh, one uh, effort we applaud here is uh, I noticed that uh, Lionel Richie's coming to San Antonio. So our second annual benefit concert, last year Paul McCartney was the first one. Um, this year we're, we're going to be doing that every year. So our second annual benefit concert, which is going to be on October 22nd this year, uh, will be an evening with Lionel Richie. I'm really excited about this. Lionel um, generally only plays you know, really big rooms, uh, maybe not quite as big as McCartney, but arenas, no doubt. Um, the last time he was here, is my understanding, he played the Alamo Dome in the year 2000 or 2001 maybe. So it's been quite a many years since he's been here. and. You know, with all his Grammys and, and the legacy of the Commodores and everything else, seeing him in, again, a, a big name like that in an intimate space like the Tobin is, is going to be a magical night, there's no doubt. When uh, the seats like Paul McCartney and um, Lionel Richie, and I'm probably missing one or two here, I can't remember any time, I'm born and raised here in San Antonio, I've gone to many, many concerts, I can't remember at any time to where seats in the front were going for $1,000 a shot. Um, is there any problem selling seats at $1,000 a shot? Well, this is only a one-time-a-year scenario, um, Paul and, and Lionel. I mean, every other show, I don't think, the, I think the most expensive ticket for any other show we've ever had on the books was maybe $200. Um, this is a benefit concert. We are a, a 501c3 non-for-profit organization. We do support the arts and culture in the city, um, as well as a lot of educational children programming. So this concert really is to help benefit that and allow us to, to keep promoting these big events and support not only the youth of San Antonio by bringing them to free concerts and introducing them to the theatrical arts, but also helps us subsidize our resident companies like the Symphony of the Opera, the Ballet, the Chamber Orchestra, the Kids Choir, and so on um, to be able to continue on. So the reason that they're expensive for this show in particular is because it is a benefit. Now that said, although there, are, there might be front row tickets available at $1,000, the, the entire balcony is at 85 of course, of course. So there are still seats available at all price levels so that, you know, everyone can still, you know, have the opportunity to attend. No doubt. And don't get me wrong. I'm not knocking the prices because I think at the end of the day, the people that are paying these prices, they, they understand that it's not only for the performance itself, but it's it, charity. That's right. It's a charity. It's, it's yeah. a non Your guys are non-profit. Exactly. So you will see this once a year where, you know, there is a show that has an extremely high ticket price that, you know, might give some people some sticker shock. Um, but I'd like to remind those people that we're doing, we're trying to do a good thing here, and we're trying to support not only arts and culture, but educational programs for the kids of San Antonio, and that's where the non-for-profit money goes. That's why I was saying, you know, in my lifetime here, I cannot remember a ticket for anybody coming to San Antonio being that price, but then again, you guys are totally different as well. Yeah, we're taking on a new model, and um, it's something that I, I'm not sure has been done here before. Uh, but something that I think we found success in with Paul McCartney, although a, a different, you know, uh, type of show because we were opening at the time and, you know, it was a branding scenario as well as many other, you know, um, opportunities there with that show. But um, I think we would like to do a Lionel Richie type event every single year and hopefully can raise some money for the kids and, and for the arts community as a whole and do a good thing and have a great show at the same time. I can only imagine the struggles that you go through on some of these artists to get them in here. It's not easy. Um, it's a lot of negotiation. It's a lot sure. of phone calls. It's sure. a lot of emails, um, and we fight hard for dates. Uh, we do. Sure. I mean, these a lot of these acts are um, you know wanted from cities all over the world and, and buildings all over the world and promoters all over the world. I'm just blessed that we've had as much of an opportunity as we ha as we have. Don't you think, Aaron, that sometimes these artists they get so used to being on the rotation of wherever they go to city to city, and like like we were talking about, they forget San Antonio, and you're trying to get them out of that groove of what they're doing just on their, 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 their rotation each and every year and you're trying to get them out of that and say, hey, wait a minute, we're over here, guys. Uh, absolutely. In fact, that was the biggest challenge coming in and why I was here more than a year before we even opened working on the calendar is because we needed to make sure that the agents and the managers even knew who we were. The Tobin Center? Well, what's that? Where are you? San Antonio? Well, we, we generally just play Austin, Dallas, New and, you know, Houston. Why do we want to come there? And it took that entire year to convince these agents and, and show them the videos of the building and the pictures and, and the quality of what we were going to be able to do um, to be able to convince them to just give us a shot with these acts. Uh, at this point, now we've branded ourselves. And, you know, we've had enough talent here that, you know, when someone says, well, who else has been there? 
I got a list of mine. <laughs> but, you know, we all start. We started from nothing, and sure. every agent's first question in a new building is, "Well, who else has played?" Well, we haven't had anybody because we weren't open, and that was a struggle. And that was that's where the relationship portion, I think, came in, where I could, you know, go to an agent or a manager and say, "We've worked together in the past." You know, we've done this show 10 times. It may not have been in this building, but I assure you that this is the right spot. I'm going to do right by your act, and they're going to love the space. And that's the portion of the relationship part that comes in. You know? In other words, the Tobin had to build a resume, wouldn't you say? Uh, you couldn't, couldn't have said it better. Right. Absolutely. So, Aaron, what else is going on here at the Tobin? Well, along the lines of um, what we were talking about earlier with um, supporting education and the community, you know, the arts community, we're going to be hosting actually a couple summer camps here this summer, which is um, pretty cool. We're, uh, there's going to be a one-week uh, mariachi summer camp for students who want to learn mariachi and the trade and the art and, and the music behind it, um, as well as a theatrical summer camp for kids who want to uh, be able to perform in plays and musicals and such. So even down to, you know, not just the performances, but the things that we're doing to engage in the community, especially from an education front, um, I know we're really excited about these two summer camps. So that's, that's awesome. Great. Now let me ask you a question here. Now on Paul McCartney, let's go back to Paul McCartney here for just a minute. Any fond memories, any conversation with him, anything that yeah. you can share with the audience out there? Um, a special moment. You know, for me, I mean, I've met a lot of famous people over the years, and there's just a certain energy and aura around Paul McCartney that I've never quite seen before. I don't even know if I remember what I said to him. I was kind of so like, you know, I, I mean, I try not to be starstruck, but I think we all get that way at some point. And for me, you know, being a music fan, the Beatles was the pinnacle. So um, I got to shake his hand, and, you know, I know he said, thank you for having me, and, you know, it was a pleasure to be here. Um, but I think that the, the, the most magical portion of the night actually for me was, was the show itself. Um, I remember looking at the set list and um, them telling me to pay close attention to Live and Let Die, specifically that song. And for us, that song, that's, I mean, that was a special tune for me, but they had in that song uh, um, a crazy amount of pyro and electronics and lights and fireworks that were going off in the building. So I remember, you know, the bridge right at Live and Let Die when there's that pause and then all of a sudden you, you heard and saw this like boom <laughs> of fireworks and light. You could feel the, the heat coming off the stage. And for me, I think that's the moment of that night I'll probably always remember is the heat coming off the stage and, and seeing him with the fireworks on Live and Let Die. Um, so the Tobin can handle pyros and stuff like that. We can handle pyro. We can, we're extremely technically advanced. Uh, as far as theater, as far as theaters go, so we can handle. There shouldn't be too many shows out there that we can't handle. That is simply awesome. What is in the future for the Tobin Center? Well, how about this? How about how about I give you a special uh, a special uh, heads up here? So we've got um, <laughs> we've got two announcements on Monday. Actually, uh, we're we're coming out with. So on Monday, we're going to announce uh, John Sakata. You may remember him, the soul, oh, wow. the, uh, the key sure. soul singer, uh, from the Miami Sound Machine. Lots of hits in the '80s. He hasn't been on the road and. I mean, he hasn't played Texas that I know in well over a decade. So this might be, I don't want to be quoted on it, but it might be the first San Antonio play for him since, you know, being with the Miami Sound Machine. And sure. The phone. So I'm really excited about that. That's going to come in September. And then um, we're also putting up a, a kind of a last-minute show in June, a show called Hippie Fest. Um, Hippie Fest is going to feature The Family Stone. Uh, you remember the music of Sly and the Family Stone? Of course, Stone. of course. Uh, Rick Derringer, Mitch Ryder and the Detroit Wheels, and Rick Derringer are all going to be here on the same night as part of this uh, Hippie Fest tour, and that's going to be Sunday, July 12th. So uh, we're excited about that as well. Um, and we've got lots of great shows, even all summer. Um, Michael McDonald is uh, coming in July. Right. Uh, we've got, I should probably go down the list here. Um, you know, obviously we just had Sky Gnome. Pat Benatar is coming in July. Right. And we have a massive lineup for, uh, for the fall. We did announce our Broadway subscription series uh, for next year that will include Flashdance and the producers among some other titles. We have a dance subscription and um, lots, of, lots of great shows. I mean, if you're a pop fan, even down to, you know, Megan Trainer and Fifth Harmony are going to be coming through this summer. So, Aaron, how exciting this is, man, for the caliber of talent that you're bringing to San Antonio. Now, are you feeling the love from San Antonio yet? I really feel the love. <laughs> uh, this, place, this, uh, this city as a whole is maybe the friendliest place I've ever had the opportunity to live and be a part of. And this community really has embraced me and taken me in and, and given me the support that, you know, I needed to be able to help give the community what I, what I hope they all want. 
Have you ever been to San Antonio before? I had not been to San Antonio before. I moved wow! The, only, the first time I was ever in San Antonio was for my first interview. Really? Uh, I'll take it a step further. The only time I had ever been to Texas before that first interview was two South by Southwest conferences. So how long have you lived in San Antonio now? Uh, I've been here just under two years. Two years. How do you like the food? Love it. <laughs> I mean, come on. You see, Aaron, and you thought Taco Bell kicked ass. Come on. All uh, right. No, this, is, this is the real deal. This is the real deal. So uh, it's great. Um, I truly love it here. I, I'm truly blessed to have an opportunity to work at a, at a beautiful facility like the Tobin and be considered part of the community of San Antonio. Aaron, any last words to the San Antonio people out there? And uh, should, let, me, let me correct that. Not only to San Antonio, but throughout the world because we're internet radio. I just want to thank you. thank everybody who's supported us. Uh, this is been an amazing year for our opening season. We've had massive support from, you know, your, to your point, not just San Antonio, but we've seen people drive here from, you know, many cities in Texas, fly here uh, from, you know, New York, LA, Chicago. Uh, there's been, you know, people from all over the country here, and we're just blessed to have the support we have, and uh, we hope that to continue. Aaron Zimmerman, thank you for being part of Robert Rivers Radio Morning Show. Thank you for having me.